when you quit, your mind does this because you're out. Once you say, I'm not going to quit, this is the 40%. We, when you quit, your mind says we're done. So it doesn't expand. There's no expansion when you quit. When you say, Fuck you, uh-uh, this sucks. I'm drowning. I'm miserable. I'm suffering. I'm broken, but I'm not going anywhere. What happens to your mind is it does this. It says, he's not leaving. So we got to expand. We got to grow. We got to figure this thing out. So then these compartments in your brain start to have, they have to work. They have to work. And then you start to engage parts of your mind that you never engaged before. Small minds and weak people kill big dreams. You might have clear goals and be working on yourself every day. But if you have the wrong folks around you, there's a good chance they could be sucking the life right out of you and making sure that you go nowhere. When I select my crew, I'm not looking for elite runners to pace me. I look for individuals with a foxhole mentality. Of the four men who joined Kish and me in Moab, only one had ever done an ultra before and two others barely ran 20 miles a week. But I didn't choose them for their running ability. They all understood me. They appreciated my mindset, knew how far I was willing to go and were ready to do whatever it took to get me there. My success in this race was their only priority. When I told them I was heading back out to finish the job, nobody was surprised. They had been with me all day, knew I was feeling better and most importantly, know who the fuck I am. They expected me to try and finish. When I knocked on their doors at four in the morning, they were damn near packed for the trail already with a look on their faces that said, what took you so damn long? In military speak, the foxhole is a fighting position. In life, it's your inner circle. These are the people you surround yourself with. They know your history and are aware of your future goals and past limitations. But because it's a fighting position, a foxhole can just as easily become your grave. Therefore, it is crucial that you be careful about who you invite in. Whether you are at war, competing in a game, or striving in life, you never want someone in your foxhole who lacks faith or will try to steer you away from your full potential by giving you permission to pack it in or wave the white flag when she looks bleak. You want the husband or wife who, when you snooze that alarm on a freezing midwinter morning before dawn, shakes you the f awake so you don't miss your training run. When you're dieting and whining about being bored of eating the same bland foods every day, they remind you of all the progress you have made, of all the hard work you have put in, and happily eat the same bland foods alongside you. When you say you're tired from all the late night studying, they stay up late with you to help you study. You want the type of race crew who, when you're suffering on the trail, are inspired by bearing witness to your struggle. They know it is proof of your effort. In turn, their refusal to give up on you can only inspire you to tap the reserves you'd forgotten were there and give more. They know the only time to shut down and walk away is after all options have been exhausted even if that means yet another sleepless night or last minute change of schedule. When those are the motherfuckers in your foxhole, how can you not stay in the fight? Most people don't have a selection process for their foxhole. They invite all the old cronies and close relatives in by default. As if growing up with someone is the top qualification for foxhole membership. Old friends are great and shared. History is to be respected. But not every person who has been in your life a long time is looking out for your best interests. Some of them are threatened by your growth because of how it impacts them. Some are looking for a friend to keep them company in their half-ass lives. In order to populate your foxhole with the right people, you must first know who you are as an individual. That means shaking off old belief systems, creaky concepts of the world and your place in it, that no longer serve you and the habits and lifestyle that you've outgrown. Any ideas or interests that were impressed upon you by others 
whether they be your family, peers, or culture, must be examined consciously so you can see through all of them and discover your own unique individuality. For most people, this is a slow, organic process that can take years if it happens at all. But if you bring intentionality to it, individuation can be accelerated. Once you find out who the f you are, the world will start delivering you care packages filled with opportunities that will fuel your quest. Do things you hate to do. Be uncomfortable every fucking day of your life. Roger that. I'm not the smartest kid in the world. Okay. Instead of somebody saying, oh, no, you're smart. No, no, don't say that to yourself. I said to myself, no, I'm a dumb Okay, Roger that. How you get smarter? Educate yourself. So the things that we run from, we run from the truth. We're running from the truth, man. So the only way I became successful was going towards the truth. As painful and as brutal as it is, it changed me. It, it allowed me to become, in my own right, who I am today. In addition to power eating and spraying cockroaches, I did a lot of searching after I left the Air Force at 24 years old. I was looking for my place in the world and tried on different personas and subcultures. I explored becoming a wrestler. I got into powerlifting and thought about competing in that sport, but those weren't honest choices. I didn't burn with a desire to wrestle or lift heavy on stage. All I knew was that I didn't want to be David Goggins anymore. I wanted to be the hardest motherfucker ever to live. The problem was, I didn't know what the fuck that looked like. It was terrifying to admit that to anyone, including myself, because at the time I was out of shape, working a low wage job and living well beyond my means. How the fuck do you go from that to hard motherfucker? I had no clue and wondered if I was delusional. Who the f gave me the right to have such an audacious dream? Even I thought I sounded ridiculous. But as absurd as it may have seemed, I didn't let go of that dream. I let it linger in the back of my brain. Then one day, a care package arrived in the form of a Navy SEAL documentary, and there it was. I finally found a place to start that might just lead to hard motherfucker territory. My dream no longer felt delusional. It felt possible. My evolution had begun, but as my Navy SEAL future crystallized over the next several months, I learned that when you change, not everyone in your life will be on board. You will get some serious resistance, and it will be a pain in your ass. Everywhere I turned, I found family members, friends, and co-workers resistant to my evolution because they loved the Ecolab spraying, chocolate shake slurping fat ass. At 300 pounds, I made them feel much better about themselves, which is another way of saying they were holding me back. Years later, I learned how common that kind of thing is. Most of the men I recruited into the SEALs confided that their wives, girlfriends, or parents were dead set against something they wanted more than anything in the world. That can be extremely stressful when you are striving to be you especially when it involves pushing your limits of pain and suffering or sacrificing life and limb. You do not need to deal with trying to make everybody happy at the same time. When you are conflicted like that, your internal dialogue becomes counterproductive. And when those moments of truth arrive and the quitting mind gets loud, that inner conflict might be the very thing that convinces you to give up. When I first made the decision to try to become a Navy SEAL, the only person in my foxhole was my mom. She knew what it entailed and was immediately on board. I didn't see any fear in her eyes. While she was worried about me, she believed in what I was doing even more. And that allowed me to train and fight with a clear head and maximum focus. Years later, when I ran Badwater, she was in my crew. I walked 100 of those, 135 miles. And when horse flies were all over me and I was suffering in the heat, she got out of the support vehicle sobbing, not because I was in pain, but because she was proud of me, because I was pushing through it all like a warrior. I have people now, so when I was in the worst part of my life, 
those people want to bring you back in. Those people, it's like, like you can see who you hang out with, like when you're in your worst. And when you're trying to get better, what, what makes it hard to get better is that you are hanging around people who, like, let's say you are an alcoholic. You hang around people who drink. And let's say you want to stop drinking. Those people want to bring you back in. Like I used to be this guy, this guy who was, you know, who wasn't worth anything. Now those people who are still there, they're 16, 17, 18, 30 years ago, they're trying to get you back there. So the hardest part, you got to see who you're hanging out with, man. Not all friends and loved ones react that way when you change and become committed to perpetual growth. Some are genuinely offended and you don't need or want their voices in your head, which is a nice way of saying you may be required to can some motherfuckers along the way who you hang around and speak to on the daily matters. That's why it is not a successful formula for people in drug and alcohol recovery to continue to hang out with the people they used to party with if they want to stay sober. When you evolve, your inner circle must evolve with you. Otherwise, you may subconsciously halt your own growth to avoid outpacing and losing contact with the people who mean a lot to you, but may not be able to hang with you. When there is no one around you who believes in or understands your quest, you must turn your foxhole into a one-man fighting position. That's okay. It is always better to fight alone until you can find people strong enough to fight the good fight with you. There is no time to waste trying to pull dead weight up a hill. I've been there many times and you must hold out until reinforcements arrive, even if it takes years. Loneliness can be difficult and depleting, but I'd much rather you stay lonely than crawl out of your foxhole and trek back through known territory into the arms of the very people who love the old you and were never comfortable with your transformation. Does this mean you have to end all relationships or burn all bridges? No, not necessarily. But doubters must be kept at arm's length and anyone in your inner circle must accept you for who you are and who you want to become. This may require an adjustment period and that is understandable. But within a reasonable amount of time, the men and women in your foxhole must, in their words and actions, give you permission to be you. In 2018, right before I received my VFW award, I realized how much I couldn't stand being retired. I spent hours calling old friends and new contacts in the military, looking for a way back in. I considered re-enlisting in pararescue, but remembering how much I loved Ranger School and Delta Selection, I thought the Army might be a better fit. So I dropped word that I was interested in enlisting as a 44-year-old grunt. It didn't take long for a recruiter to reach out. He was convinced he could make it happen. But it meant moving to some backwoods Army base for training. Keish was not thrilled. She'd worked hard and kicked ass in the corporate world for 20 years and she did not expect to be living on or around an army base at that point in her life. She damn sure didn't expect me to turn down dozens of lucrative speaking gigs to prepare for a third stint in the military. By then, I was already earning more money for an hour or two of public speaking than I'd earn in a year as a grunt. I found myself walking on eggshells, wondering if the woman I love would want to stay with me. At the same time, I knew living someone else's idea of my life is a recipe for misery. In the end, for a number of reasons, I didn't re-enlist. I got into wildland firefighting instead. My mission hadn't changed. I was, and still am, trying to become the hardest motherfucker to ever live. That's not an ego trip. It's a way of life. It may be far-fetched and even unachievable, but I remain in service of that vision. Fast forward a few years, and Kish is most definitely foxhole qualified. Now, she is the one who blocks off the fire season entirely and turns down every speaking inquiry that comes in for those months without even asking me because she understands exactly who I am and what I'm about. She knows what my priorities are and fully supports them without question. She admires that I'm fulfilled by doing things that most people shy away from and that the lure of money and fame do absolutely nothing for me but leave me feeling empty. She wants me to find my very best. 
I'm wired the same way. When Keish confided in me that she wanted to run a sub 325 marathon, I helped her train and strategize, and she accomplished her goal with a time of 321 in Philadelphia. When she mentioned possibly applying to law school, she received a package of LSAT books at the door the very next day. Don't ever tell me you want to run a marathon because I will sign you up for a race. Monitor your daily training and run that with you. If you tell me you want to be a doctor, I'll be the motherfucker who enrolls you in med school while you're sleeping and you'll wake up to a class first thing in the morning. Most people can't handle that level of intensity, but that's the kind of backing I want. The type that comes with an expectation of effort and demands hours, weeks, and even years of hard work. Because that is exactly what it takes to fulfill lofty ambitions and more important than that, find out what you are truly capable of. Who's in your foxhole? Tag them and tell them why.